Hey, what's up everybody? It's David here with Tough Guys TV, and on this episode, we're gonna be unboxing and setting up the S1 by Xtool. Now this version of the S1 comes with the 20 watt laser module. They do have a 40 watt and a two watt version available on their website if you're interested in those. As always, there'll be links down in the description for you to pick up anything you see here in the video. And in fact, using those links does help support the channel. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to us down in the comments or at Tough Guys TV on social media. Let's get started. All right, now getting started, I wanna show the boxes that everything came in. I'm not gonna go through a complete full unboxing, but I am gonna show you what components came in the package. If you are somebody who enjoys a little ASMR, then you will love unboxing this and peeling off all the plastic. So first up inside the X1, when you open the enclosure, there is a sample pack. Now, to my knowledge, this comes with every single S1 that you would purchase. They give you some vinyl sheets that are flexible that you can cut, as well as some leather and acrylic and also some three millimeter basswood. And this I think is designed to just help you to do a few of initial tests, initial engravings, and see how you like using it. They also threw in a slate coaster. Additionally, they have a little package here that includes all the instructions as well as some advertising for the created by Xtool line. You can check that stuff out on their website. Definitely spend your time reading the instructions. Don't just trust me. Now this little box here includes a custom toolkit that is designed specifically for the S1. So all the stuff that comes in there, make sure that you hold on to this because you will need it throughout the assembly. And obviously as you go, you will need to come back to these tools from time to time. This hose here is the ductwork that you connect to the air assist. We'll come back to that later. They also include some of these triangular prisms, which are just designed to elevate your workpiece off the bottom plate if you don't have the honeycomb panel. Now, of course, they include their power cord and their USB-C cables, but the main star of the show is the 20 watt laser module. Now, if you weren't aware, they make this system to where you can swap out these modules for different ones. More on that later. Next up, I wanna show off the S1 honeycomb panel. Now, this is designed to be the exact size of the cutting area for the Xtool S1, and it comes with these cool magnetic hold downs. I'm sure you can get extra ones if you need them on their website, but overall, it's a really cool add-on that I recommend you check out. Now, additionally, in our kit, we got the air assist. This is variable speed, and if you have it set on auto, it will just turn on when the machine starts to run, but you could also just choose the setting that you'd like if you're being extra particular. It has these little feet on the bottom that keeps it from, I guess, shaking itself or hurting it in some way. As the machine moves, you do get some vibration, and they include two extra filters in the package for you, which is really easy to change via this little plastic door on the bottom of the air assist unit itself. And of course, don't forget to read the instructions. And if you're interested, there's more fun to be had over on social media, go give us a follow. Switching gears now to the actual assembly and getting this thing going, you have two locks that are on the inside that kept the laser module arms from moving forward during shipping. You'll need to remove those using the screwdriver that comes in the toolkit. As you can see there, I dropped one of the screws down, so be careful with that. Once you have them removed, you can actually slide the arm forward, which will give you much easier access to install the laser module. Xtool made this process really easy. It's a nice little clicky connector that you can install on the side and connect your air assist hose. Again, that connector would be used for any of the laser modules that they offer on their website. Once you're ready, the laser module mounts into this little bracket. There's a little tooth on the back. It slides down and connects with a magnet and it will hold on by itself. Next, make sure you attach the depth guide onto the side of the laser module. This attaches with a magnet. The last thing you need to do with the module overall is put the two screws in the top, which hold this thing to the mounting bracket. With the module installed, you can work your way to the back side of the machine. This is where all your main connections are gonna go. So you can hook up your air assist cable. You can also connect your cable that will control the power of the air assist. So you have three accessory connections here on the back. They're all USB-C. Additionally, there's a USB-C connection for your computer. And then there's the Xtool USB locking key, which you do need to install in the back for the machine to operate. Of course, don't forget to plug it into power. And then the last thing that is technically optional is installing that duct to the back of it. There's four screws that come out of the little graded front and it just screws on if you wanna use it. And when you're ready to go, you can slide the honeycomb panel into the front side, close the lid and the laser's ready to go. Now in our case, we also have the riser base. So I wanna go over how that is installed and assembled so that if you also got the riser base, you'll be good to go. Xtool does include a set of glasses with this since there's a chance with the door open that you would have access for your eyeballs to see the laser beam. So make sure you save those glasses. They of course include all the screws and Allen wrenches that you'll need. And all of these pieces are marked left, right, back, and front. 
so it's easy to follow. They include some foam so that you can close this little front door at the top side so you can eliminate that laser light peeking through. And now you're gonna go back to your toolkit that you got earlier. Like I said, make sure you have that. You're gonna start by removing the six screws along the bottom plate of the S1. And once you take those screws out, you can use your nice little toolkit there to save these because you will need them to reinstall everything later. With your screws removed, you can push the laser module back, remove the bottom plate, which will basically just leave the entire bottom of the S1 open. Now you can lay out the four sections of the riser base and begin the assembly. Overall, the instructions are pretty solid here, so just follow step by step. And if you do have a solid flat surface, it would obviously be superior than two sawhorses. You're gonna attach the front and the back panel to the sides with screws in the corner. You will not be tightening these down all the way. I'll speak more about that here in a moment. And when you do lift the main machine onto the bottom riser base, make sure you have help. All right, we'll take a break from the voiceover for a quick second. Setting the base on here, the reason they tell you to leave two of the screws loose is because this actually was a little bit like off to where you want the sides to be nice and tightly aligned. In order to do that, you have to adjust these screws that are in here or loosen them rather and then that allows the front and the back to sort of shimmy left and right. Don't skip that step so that you can easily adjust this. Once you set this on there, you can make sure that the sides are nice and tight. And thank you, non-voiceover me. Back to the assembly, you're gonna be taking these screws and you're gonna lay them around the perimeter. These are the ones that are gonna attach the upper section of the S1 to the riser base down below. And the instructions show you pretty clearly where you place these but here's a view of the left and the right side of the machine. Once you have those screws in place, the next thing you need to do is install that foam closure stripping on the top of the front door and the back door. In my case, I needed to put two strips on the front to close it fully, and on the back side, I only ended up needing one. I did save the extra strip just in case in the future these things compress a little bit, and I need to actually close off the laser from view. I use my phone light here to show you that virtually no light is passing through on the inside and that I did a good job there. Last thing to do is to slide in that base plate again. Now the cool thing is this can raise or lower on the slots on the riser base in case you're ready to do different types of projects, so don't forget about that. Now speaking of projects, the first one that we decided to do was actually Xtool's recommended first project. It is making a phone stand. So I wanted to show off our setup here briefly. We have the Xtool sitting on a little platform that we built in the shop. We headed over to their website and they have a link to their first recommended project. If you scroll down, you can download the correct file depending on the laser that you have. And this is fully editable, if that's a word. You can delete all the stuff that they have in there and add your own logo files or your own images or whatever it is that you'd like to engrave on there. The software allows you to fully resize and reshape everything as well as a bunch of different fonts already built in. And I do believe you can load extra fonts into the system if you'd like. Now for this one, we're also gonna be using that three millimeter basswood that came actually in the package. So we didn't go out and buy anything separate. This is the one that came with it. The first thing you're gonna do is lay it into the machine. And then the first step with the software before you do anything else is set the depth. This is an automated process. You press the button, it'll drop this little pin pointer down and then it'll send it over to the side of the machine where there's a little ledge. It'll come down again and that'll tell the Xtool system how far down the depth of the product is. The next thing you need to do is work on your framing or where exactly on the workpiece you're gonna be doing the engraving. So what I like to do is figure out where the laser crosshairs are on the piece and then I go to the software and I adjust the image on the software screen to be close so I can start to get where I wanna be. At that point, you can use the framing function and the laser will go through a motion and actually show you where it's about to do the work. So if you don't wanna waste a bunch of your product, then I suggest sliding it over to the side or limiting the full area of the burn or the engraving or the cutting that you're gonna be doing to save as much of the product as you can like this. Now at this point, you need to make sure that the settings you have for the actual engraving or the cutting are set to your liking. So depending on your product that you're using or the type of project that you're making, you'll need to do this. Additionally, you wanna make sure that you use those little magnetic hold downs so that you can hold the piece in place and there's no chance that the workpiece will vibrate around or move as the machine does. There is some light shaking when this thing moves, but having the hold downs will prevent it from moving in my experience so far. Now with the lid closed, you can officially begin your engraving or your laser cutting 
As long as the lid's closed, you can press process and then you can press the little button on the front of the machine and you're good to go. Now overall, the speed is impressive compared to other lasers that I've had, not only for the engraving, but also for the cutting speed. That is a perk that I've seen so far. And the 20 watt is actually more set up for intricate engravings is my understanding versus the 40 watt laser, which is gonna give you a lot better cutting power. And here you can see the honeycomb panel in action where it's allowing the smoke from underneath the workpiece get out so that the air assist can take it out the back, send it through that duct and get it outside and away from the shop. An alternative there would have been those little triangular prism pieces. So if you don't have the honeycomb panel, you can still achieve the same result. Now, overall, I think this turned out great. You can see really tiny details there on the YouTube logo. This whole thing right there, those little logos are maybe a quarter of an inch tall or less. You just remove your magnetic hold downs, pop your piece out, save your extra basswood if you're gonna be making another project, and there you go. Overall, it was a quick and easy project, less than 10 minutes from loading it into the machine into getting the finished piece is a pretty good overall experience in my opinion. So I hope that you will give Xtool a try if you're in the market for a laser engraver. And if you have any questions, of course, let us know down in the comments. And all right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it helped you out, especially if you're trying to set up your S1. Now remember, this is kind of a part one of a series that we're gonna do with the S1, and we have two creative projects coming up very soon, which I hope you'll check out. Don't forget, there's links down in the description if you'd like to pick up anything that you saw today in the video, and using those links does help support the channel. You can also find us at Tough Guys TV on any social media if you do have any questions or you're just interested to see what else we have going on. And I'll see you in the next video.